Hi everyone. I wanted to get on here and do a quick review of Tony of Beverly Isla, and that's spelled I-S-L-A. She is in the color Kahlua. And I had done a really quick video on her the first day that I wore her just because I felt like, you know, filming some, a little bit of something, but I don't usually do videos uh, the first time I wear a wig. I like to wear it at least one time for for a period of time, not just for like an hour. And sometimes I'll wear it more than once before I do a video. So I have worn Isla now a couple of times. Um, the first few times it was just like an hour or two, but I actually wore her uh, last week uh, for an entire day. And so I feel like I can talk a little bit more about her now that I've worn her. So Isla is a lace front wig but she does not have any monofilament. So she is a basic cap everywhere else. She just has a lace front. And this lace front is unbelievably fabulous. Like, undetectable. So good. This lace front is amazing. So Isla is a perfect wig to wear off the face. So if you wanted to put a clip in her and put her off the face, if you wanted to wear like a headband with her, See if I can do this. I don't have her adhered to me, so I don't want to pull her off of me. If you wanted to throw a headband on and then kind of mess with her a little bit so she looked good with the headband, you could totally do that with complete confidence. I think I'm getting a glare that you are not going to be able to see that there is a wig on your head. So Isla is fabulous um, that way. So my impression of Isla, first of all, this color is really different for me. It's a really heavily highlighted color. I'm trying to get close enough so that you can actually see. Very highlighted. It's got some brunette. I'll have to look and see if I can find what the codes of these this is, but it's a brunette. It's got a blonde highlighting in it. So, I mean, it's definitely a brunette, but it's a heavily highlighted with blonde highlights. So, um, I think a uh, blonde could probably wear her if she wanted to go like really look like she low lighted her hair or, um, you know, good color for summer, really good color for summer. Uh, it takes a little bit of getting used to for me because I'm not used to this color. <sighs> My other impressions of Isla, I think this style is so darling. Let me turn around for you so you can see the back. It's just got these fun layers. I'm kind of short when I get close, so I wanted to. It just has really fun layering, and I love this side swept kind of longer bang going on. I just, and it lays great. She doesn't bother me. She doesn't really get in my face. I mean, if I want to really shake her, she'll go like this, but all it takes is a little bit of this, and she stays put. So that I really love. I love to tuck my wigs, as most of you who watch my videos know. And I tuck her just fine. You can see my bio hair right here, and it doesn't blend great. Um, my uh, bio, hair, bio hair is pretty thick, or oh, I'm sorry, guys. Bio hair is pretty dark, and it doesn't blend great, but I can work with that a little bit. So she's a tuckable wig. Um, she does have um, vel uh, velveteer tabs, and so you they sit right about here on me. So you you can see my bio hair poking out. I can give you guys my measurements as well. Um, so overall, I think she's a really cute style. I struggled with her. I, it's hard for me to describe my back and forth with this one. So I, she's so comfortable and I feel good when I have her on, but I wore her when I, I spent the day with my daughter and we were shopping and walking around. And every time I caught my view of my hair in a mirror or a window, I didn't like it. I don't know what to, how to say that. I love it when I'm looking in the mirror right now. I like it in the video. I just didn't like it that day. I felt like it wasn't my style. I almost felt like it was too old for me and I'm you know I'm 47 I'm not young I mean I'm not old but I'm not young and I just felt I don't know but now 
she's looking pretty good. So I wonder if she's relaxed a little bit. I'll have to take a look at that other video and see, and I'll post them both so you can see, but I feel like maybe she's relaxed a little. And I'll be honest with you, something I did that I learned from Taz, and I haven't done it before, is um, I took my wide tooth comb. When I took her off, I conditioned her, but I really got into this Permatease, which she has, all basic caps do, um, I think. Um, and I uh, kind of combed her out a little bit and I wonder if that made a huge difference in how it relaxed her because seriously, I'm looking at myself right now going, I think I'm going to wear this wig today. Uh, and I really thought after I wore her last week that I was going to sell this wig. So I think if you've got a wig with permatees, and if I can find Taz's video, I'll link it. I'm not sure because I think it was in another video. Um, but I think that that's a great t tip is to really, you know, don't try to pull the hair out of the cap or anything, but really get in there to the, with that permatease and just loosen it. I think that will help tremendously in taming that a little bit because um, I, I really think that's what happened with this wig after I took it off and, and did my wig maintenance. So let me show you the cap. Um, like I said, it has the lace front, but otherwise it is a basic cap. Now this cap, I think if you've watched other videos, you know that this is usually an indication of permatease. When you've got a section that's got this like flowery material over it to hide the permatease. So when I look at her, that's the case for this wig. She definitely has permatease all on the crown, but it's minimal permatease. It's not heavy. It's not like a huge bump of permatease. And that's really the only place she has um, traditional permatease. On the sides, she has this, um, it's like kinky hairs. It's like baby permatease. Um, if you can see that there. Taz has a video on this as well and talks about mo uh, the different types of permatease. And so you've got your traditional sort of clump of kind of rat's nest permatease. And then you've got like these kinky hairs that are almost like you, if you ratted your own hair to make it, give it some lift in body. So that is what gives this wig its shape um, is some of that permatease. But I don't really like permatease. Um, I've softened my heart to it a little bit as I've worn wigs more, but I'm not a fan about of big hair and permatease. So this to me is like probably as much as I, I can take. It's right on the edge of being fine. So if you're really afraid of permatease, but you wanna try a Tony of Beverly style, you like this particular cut, which is so cute, um, I wouldn't be terrified of the permatease. I would just educate myself on how to deal with permatease. So I don't wanna make this video too long. So I just wanna give you some a, a few quick measurements so that you know how this fits me. Let me double check. Did I adjust the caps? Or the, no, I really didn't take these in. I probably could take her in slightly to make her a little tighter on me. Uh, so um, my circumference is 22 inches around. So I am 22 inches around where the wig cap would fit me on my head. And that is right at average. It's a small average actually. So it's not petite, but it's right on the edge. But the rest of my measurements, I'm looking at my phone so I can grab those numbers for you. The rest of my measurements are very petite. So keep that in mind when you look at wigs. Everybody always talks about their circumference. That is one measurement. Wigs fit your whole head. So sometimes it may fit you around but it may not fit you here. So it can, it can be helpful to ask people what their other measurements are. So I'm average here, but I'm super petite here and here. So from my forehead to from the top of the, you know, the hairline to my nape or the bottom of my hairline, it's 12.75 um, front of hairline to nape. Average from what I found is 14.25. So I'm an inch and a half smaller than average here. That's a pretty big difference. And I have found when wigs fit me well here, they can have a lot of room in the cap and Isla is no exception. I am also from here to here, so ear tab to ear tab, I am 12 inches 
and 13.5 is what I have listed as average. Again, an inch and a half difference here to here. So I would say that if you are a average all the way up to large average, I think Isla would fit you. I really do. Um, she's got good, pretty good stretch here, and I have quite a bit of room in the cap. Quite a bit of room. It's really hard to show, but I have a lot of room. It doesn't bother me, I mean, and maybe I'm just getting used to it. It really doesn't bother me. I find her to be very comfortable. If you wear a wig grip or a wig cap and you are on the smaller end of average, then that this will fit you great. It won't make it tight. Uh, so I wanted to just give you guys that perspective. So <sighs> wrapping this up, I don't know how to, these are getting longer and longer the more I make. Uh, so Tony of Beverly, Isla, I don't have the tag with me because it's uh, somewhere else, um, in the color Kahlua, and I like her. I think she's cute. I, I, you know, I've changed my mind about whether or not I'm going to keep her. I think I'll wear her a little bit more and really decide um, if she's a style for me. It could just be some of the color that I have a problem with, but I recommend her, and I like Tony of Beverly fibers. I think they're really natural feeling. Um, they feel really good, so great wig. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.